Yo, what everyone, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to go over how to create this really cool stabilization effect in Final Cut Pro 10. So this may be a little subtle, this may not be like the best example. If you go ahead and watch right here, this is basically where I targeted right here, this little spot in his helmet. And watch where that mouse is. You can see right here, it doesn't move. So you're going to go ahead and see right here, I just centered this right here. And see that place does not move on the mouse right there. So that's basically the point where it's kind of stabilized. And this is what the effect looks like right here. Basically where his head is, like everything is moving except his head. Uh, except his head is pretty much staying in the exact same spot. So it's a pretty cool effect. I saw this effect a long time ago, and you probably saw it too in like a Beats by Dre commercial. I believe that's where this effect became very popular, and everywhere you looked, you saw this effect. Even though it's been a long time, I, I wanted to go ahead and basically go over how to use um, this effect. Now, this effect is from Pixel Film Studios. This video is not sponsored at all, it's just from Pixel Film Studios. It does cost $30. So, so yes, it is a plug, and it's definitely more expensive plugin but I definitely think it's worth it granted it's not for every um, situation so make sure you go ahead and I'll put that link in the description down below you can just install the plugin and then just download it like you would a normal pixel films um, studio plugin so I'm gonna head over to the example right here I'm gonna go ahead and head over to the effects panel right here Scroll down until you find the stabilization right here, FCPX Stabilizer 2.0. I, I have version 2.0. I'm not quite sure when it came out, but I have version 2.0. So now once it's on the clip, I'm going to go ahead and click on the clip right here. I'm going to go over head over to Track Editor right here. Now here are a whole bunch of different settings. Now if you're not familiar with like the auto tracker, this could definitely feel a little overwhelming. So what you want to do is you want to turn the track quality to 100%. Tracking type, I would track position, scale, and rotation just in case you want to use the rotation. I don't think a lot of people would want to use the rotation, but it's good to basically stabilize all three of these because you never know when you're actually going to want to use them. Now here's a tracker right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and just move right here and you can use these controls right here. Go ahead and press on here to basically just get a much closer view. Click off the hand to basically select it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a selection. See where this little point is right here? This is basically where it's stabilized. I think this is just kind of a, an outer selection. Not quite sure what this really does. I can't give you like a an in-depth um, description of what this does. but. Basically what you want to do is you want to make sure, you don't you, you don't want to make this too big because it might be hard to track, but you can make it smaller because it doesn't really matter. But this is basically the point, this is where uh, Final Cut is going to try to auto track it right there. So remember that tracking type position scale plus rotation, track quality is turned up to 100%. Just select your area and put the point where you want it to be stabilized. Basically like I showed before, this is the point, this is the point where it's going to stay in one place. Everything else can move a little bit, but this is the place. This is the, the area that it's going to go ahead and going to stay in place. All you want to do is you want to make sure you're at zero, zero, zero. Start all the way at zero. Go ahead and click it right here. And we can go ahead. We'll, we'll, you can zoom out a little bit if you want. Um, we'll go ahead and just press track right here. And there you go. Now Final Cut Pro is going to do its best to track it right there. This is obviously, this is obviously going to save you a lot more time than manually keyframing it. Okay, so everything should be good right there. Now we're going to go ahead and export data right there. And if you see a mirrored effect um, right there on, on top of the effect, there we go. So there, here's the mirror effect right here. If, if, you if, you, if this doesn't show up, maybe delete the clip and apply it again. Because if this doesn't show up, it means the effect um, didn't work. So if you don't see this screen, then go ahead and just redo all the steps. I had to do it a couple times until I got it to, the, to actually work. Uh, it's you know, not perfect, but let's go ahead and play it right here. And as you can see, there we go. It's basically stabilizing that thing on his helmet right there. And voila, that's pretty much um, the effect right there. Now here is where you basically fine tune the effect. So what you want to do is you want to click on guide on and off right here. And as you can see, there is a guide. Now we can go ahead and head over here and we could scale it up to about five right there. And now we want to take the Y right here. We're going to move the Y right there and we can scale it up to 6%. Basically what we're just doing is we're tr I'm trying to get rid of, as you can see, here's a mirror right there. So we're going to move the X um, right there and voila there shouldn't be um, any more mirror 
and then you can go through and just play it to make sure that, okay there we go here's a little bit more of the mirror right there so we'll go ahead and just move this up right here and again here we go so there's more mirror right there so maybe we'll just increase this to let's say let's go a little bit higher eight right here this definitely you know definitely is a little time consuming right there so i'm gonna go ahead and just play and there we go that's pretty good obviously i, I could spend a lot more time on it right there but there we go i guess as you can see the you could see up there the mirror um right here so then we can go ahead and scale it as you can see it's definitely very time consuming you know to actually get this right but we can go ahead and just keep playing with it and there we go it all depends on you know where it tracks and there we go as you can see you can play and there's absolutely no mirror anywhere right there and then there you go as you can see yes it definitely takes a little it uh, takes um to take definitely takes a lot of time to you know get it right but there you go make sure you flip guide on and off right here and then you can basically just adjust the position you can adjust the rotation you can adjust the scale and you want to make sure you want to get rid of that mirror effect um right there finally one more thing this effect has to offer is right here now, as you can see it says apply rotation and scale data let's go ahead and select both right there as you can see it basically zooms in now we'll go ahead and play it right here and as you can see there we go that's the effect right there okay so let's say we don't want the rotation data as you can see right here it's shifted back it still is scaled up right there and they have a really close scaled up shot but let's say you don't want that close scaled up shot let's go ahead and deselect it but you actually do want the rotation effect I would honestly encourage you to not use this I don't think it looks good um, but that's of course up to you so you can see right there as you can see it's shaking a little bit now we're also seeing some mirror right here as you can see right there I'll go ahead and play it right here some of the mirror shows up so it's basically rotating too. That's why I, in the beginning we had a, like uh, the position scale and rotation just in case you wanted that. Um, I would turn off the rotation data. That's just something I would do. Scale could definitely look cool, um, but maybe you could, maybe you could try the scale data. But I definitely wouldn't apply the rotation data. That if, that is just my personal um, preference. Now if I really went for it, I probably wouldn't select any of these. But that of course is all up to you. Now let's say you want to fix something. Go ahead open up the track editor right here you could go ahead and reset the keyframes right here and then you could redo it if something messed up and you can go ahead and change something um, so let's go ahead and just for the fun of it let's just reset the keyframes and there we go let's say we want it onto his eye right here let's go ahead and track it right track the eye right there so you can reset the keyframes if you want to make any changes you can of course adjust everything else in here and then both once you're finished um, editing stuff in here you always want to go to export data right there that's just what you're gonna have to do right there um, and that's pretty much it just in case you want to fix anything so as you can see right there it's tracking his eye right there you go ahead and fix a little more but um, that's basically I'm gonna give you an example just go to track editor reset keyframes if you want to redo it any changes you make you want to go ahead if you're not making any changes just go ahead and click reset data um, right there um, I mean basically just any changes you have you can always just go back in there and make any kind of changes anyways that's pretty much the effect this is really cool uh, Final Cut Pro 10 stabilization and stabilizer like 2.0 it's definitely a really cool effect right here and this is what the effect looks like right here it basically picks a part of like the, the person or subject it picks up you basically just pick a portion of the person right there and then as you can see right here there we go it's stabilized in the shot so it creates a very cool and very unique look not for every shot not for every situation but it's definitely one of those things that an editor can really help you make really help you stand out as well as this is going to save you a lot of time instead of manually trying to keep this in center with the keyframing because i can guarantee you that's probably not even going to work um, so anyways that's pretty much this really cool stabilization um, plug in from Final Cut Pro 10. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you want to watch more Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials, make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you in the next one. Peace.